What is up, Starseeds? I am Sid Alexandria, and today we are going to be talking about Pleiadians. In particular, rogue Pleiadians. So I am filming this on August 8th, the peak of the Lion's Gate portal. In case you guys didn't know, every year on August 8th, that is the peak of this energy, okay? All of like the end of July, beginning of August is a really great time for us to connect with our star family, our galactic heritage, extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings, all of this. So it's just kind of suiting, very fitting that we're talking about Pleiadians today. However, Pleiadians aren't something that we're aligned to right now. Uh, on August 8th, this is when Earth our sun, the Syrian star system, and Orion's belt are all aligned, but I'm feeling called to talk about Pleiadians. However, there is a bit of an Orion connection to this story. So here we go. The Pleiades were all about love and light, and time is not really linear, but this is how our human brains understand it currently. So that's why I'm speaking in a way that this was in the past, because to us it kind of was. So the Pleiadians were all about love and light, but they got too wrapped up into it. And you're probably thinking, well, love and light, isn't that a good thing? Yes, but they were not embracing the dark. You cannot have the light without the dark, because if everything is just light, you, you don't know what dark is. But they were just kind of completely ignoring the bad. I don't necessarily believe in good and bad, but if you do, the Pleiadians were only embracing the good and completely ignoring the bad, okay? They were not embracing the dark. They were just too wrapped up in their light, in their little bubble of perfection, and it broke, essentially. Some Pleiadians were like, okay, I've had enough of this. Everything is not all love and light in this universe. There is dark. There is evil, there is bad things, there are terrible things that are happening, and we can't just ignore it, okay? We can't just be like, oh, sprinkle some love and light and the situation's fixed. Like, that's not how the universe works. And some of these Pleiadians just needed to experience rebellion. They, like, wanted to feel pain and evil and they wanted to rebel and act out. And so that's what they did. And they were trying to tell the other Pleiadians, hey, everything's not all love and light. And the Pleiadians that were still just wrapped up in this love and light were like, okay, get out then. Go somewhere that suits your energy. Go to Orion or somewhere because this obviously ain't it. So the rogue Pleiadians were sent to Orion. They were sent to somewhere that better suited their energy and they got to act out that rebellion, they got to act out that dark, and that is why this is such a common theme within starseeds and within people on earth right now. I can't emphasize this enough. The reason I'm making this video is because I have had more rogue Pleiadians come to me now than ever before, okay? And it's not like I have a ton of clients, okay? I have very little. I would love to have more clients. So please contact me if you would like a past life reading or astrology report, QHHT session, intuitive reading of any kind. Email me. My email is sidalexandriaegypt at gmail.com. But even just on the street, I've seen so many rogue Pleiadians lately. And a lot of these rogue Pleiadians already have the trauma signature from the destruction of Lyra. Because some of the planets in Lyra were destroyed by a group of the Draconian Reptilians, right? So we have these Pleiadians who are descendants of Lyra who have had their Lyran planets destroyed by Reptilians, keep in mind. And so they go rogue because they're like, no, our old planet got destroyed. And now our new life, everyone wants to be all love and light. No, we have this trauma from Lyra. We have planets that have been destroyed by negative beings okay by lower vibrational beings and now we're just pretending like everything's okay like no they're sick of it and so they get sent to orion 
Mind you, there's reptilians in Orion. There's lower vibrational beings in Orion. The Orion Wars have already kicked off and now these rogue Pleiadians are amping it up because they're coming in with this energy of pissed offness, really. They're like, we're ready to be rogue. We're ready to like just switch to the dark side because we can't take this extensive light anymore. And so interestingly enough, some of these rogue Pleiadians actually end up incarnating as reptilians. They're like, oh, you guys are the ones that destroyed our planet? Well, we had already embraced all of this love and light, so we do have a side of us that can forgive you. However, we're also pissed off, so then they're embracing that lower vibration, so they end up choosing to incarnate as these very reptilians that had destroyed their old planets in Lyra because they're the descendants of Lyra, right? So then a lot of them actually end up becoming reptilians in other lives or just, you know, on the dark side along with the reptilians, regardless of whether or not they actually incarnate as them. So I just wanted to point this out because I think it's very interesting. It's not all Pleiadians that went rogue, okay? Some of them, a lot of them did because they needed to experience that. And that's what a lot of troubled teens nowadays are coming from, from their past, okay? We are rogue Pleiadians now becoming rogue teenagers. I don't know, that's a thought. And Earth right now is filled with souls that were in Orion because Earth is like Orion Act 2, you know what I mean? And some of these rogue Pleiadians got so rebellious, even in Orion, once they were like affiliated with the dark side in Orion, some got sent to the planet Maldek, which used to be in between Mars and Jupiter, and is now the asteroid belt. It got blown up. The Pleiades in general, they had so many planets, everyone calls them the Seven Sisters, but there's so many more than seven stars and around those more than seven stars there's you know i can't even think of how many freaking planets that must be so they were very into all of the different types of arts okay like painting creating art with their hands music oh my gosh so musical pleiadians love animals and plants and insects and of course technology and spirituality, okay? Healing modalities, philosophy, all of this amazing stuff. You know, Pleiadians are great. And yes, there are some negative Pleiadians who are affiliated with negative reptilians. I also have to point out that not all reptilians are negative. And there are many other types of reptilians besides just the draconian reptilians that came from another galaxy some people call it another universe i will never call anything a different universe i will always call it a different galaxy far away because i as a human cannot understand the concept the concept of multiple universes if you can great but i would just call it a different galaxy because galaxies are big enough anyways draconians came from a different galaxy along with dragon beings but there were also reptilians on earth this is a reptilian planet, okay? They were naturally evolving reptilians on here before humans came to be the current form of human. Let's just say that. Those are stories for another time. There's obviously a lot more that goes along with this story, so comment or email me if you have anything that you'd like to add or anything that you think I might have gotten wrong, something that you feel differently on. I would love to hear it. I really would. So let me know. I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you guys have a great peek of the Lion's Gate portal. Peace out.